Today, it's my great honor to sign the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Act into law. Today, I'm convening this meeting to follow through on my promise to secure crucial infrastructure and the networks that we've been talking so much about over the last period of time of the federal government against cyber threats. I will hold my cabinet secretaries and agency heads accountable, totally accountable, for the cybersecurity of their organization, of which we probably don't have as much, certainly not as much as we should have. We must defend and protect federal networks and data. We operate these networks on behalf of the American people, and they are very important and very sacred. We will empower these agencies to modernize their IT systems for better security and other reasons. We will protect our critical infrastructure, such as power plants and electrical grids. Once again, full faith and support for America's intelligence agencies. I have a full faith in our intelligence agencies. Whoops, they just turned off the light. That must be the intelligence agencies. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. You guys okay? Good. That was strange. But that's okay. <laughs> Growing concern over whether the U.S. is actually prepared to respond if our power grid is compromised to cybersecurity expert Morgan Wright. Morgan, uh, ironically, I think what I read is that one of the good things we have going for us is our grid is so old, it might, be, uh, <laughs> it might not be smart enough to be compromised. <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, all you have to do, Charles, is watch a natural disaster and you'll see that um, our power grid is still fragile. We're doing a lot better at protecting it, but that's the problem. You know, it's kind of the analogy of saying, well, I can go two rounds with Mike Tyson back in the day. Yeah, well, you still can't go 15. We've got to be able to go that full 15 rounds and survive a direct attack. Look, Russia's been using Ukraine as their punching bag for a lot of years, so our lessons we need to learn are for watching what they're doing in Ukraine right now. Yeah, I remember uh, it wasn't long ago when our, we had a major power outage in the Northeast that, that was called caused by a small incident in Canada. So uh, it, it, it stands to reason we're extraordinarily yes. vulnerable, and we've been vulnerable for a long time. What, why don't we fix this? Look, you know, if you look at the patchwork that is called the energy grid, I mean, it is a collection of a lot of different things, a lot of different power stations, a lot of different technologies. They're transitioning, trying to make things more network oriented, trying to beef up their cybersecurity, but that brings its own problems because now we're trying to connect older systems to network technology. And that's one of the flaws that they took advantage of in the Ukraine attack. They, they attacked these cables that connected the power systems to the computer networks and uh, physically damaged them. So yeah, there's a lot of work we still have to do on this, Charles, but the biggest thing you're talking about is that recovery piece. We know we're gonna get attacked. The question is, how fast can we reconstitute and recover our energy? Because if you wanna go after a nation, uh, as was Deidre was saying another thing, it's a maximal war, go after their power, go after their water, and you right. can bring a nation to its knees. Well Every day, America's adversaries are testing our cyber defenses. They attempt to gain access to our critical infrastructure, exploit our great companies, and undermine our entire way of life. And we can't let that happen. This vital legislation will establish a new agency within the Department of Homeland Security to lead the federal government's civilian response to these cyber threats against our nation. We've had many, many threats against our nation. Cyber is going to be the newest form, and the threats have taken place, and we've been doing a pretty good in knocking, knocking them out, but now we'll be — this will make us, I think, much more effective. — is on the brink of disaster. — Unless we make decisions now, within five years, our electricity will start to run out. You can't make electricity out of thin air. It's a crisis which will leave us all vulnerable. For God's sake, Sophie. People are going to die. The next 12 hours will be crucial in terms of public safety and security. And the experts agree it could happen. Unless we act now. Mom. 
Is the rationale then that this is a national security issue, that the grid needs to be uh, stable? Absolutely. They're asserting that this is a national security concern, uh, that the grid is threatened by the premature closures of these plants. Uh, you know, they argue that, you know, nuclear plants and coal power plants, they have fuel on site. So they're a little bit more durable and resilient. They can snap back more quickly after an emergency or a cyber attack. This is the assertion that the Energy Department is making. And they're saying that, you know, our Defense Department installations are 99 percent de dependent on the uh, U.S. electric grid uh, and that the grid itself is threatened when coal plants and nuclear plants retire because that means that we have more natural gas power, uh, we're more dependent on natural gas power, and we're more dependent on renewable power that doesn't get produced uh, around the clock. A new article in the New York Times suggests a massive cyber attack is on the horizon, and many systems worldwide are just simply not prepared for it. Land Security Cyber Team is already focused on the 2018 midterm elections, describing it as one of the highest priorities on par with protecting the power grid. But when we're in an incident, this is where we would manage an incident, and we do that collaboratively because the federal government is just, we can't do it alone. The Trump administration has eliminated its cyber security rather coordinator role in a move that really has puzzled a lot of experts. Rob Joyce announced that he was leaving the post to return to the National Security Agency last month. And he will not be replaced. Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton, says that he hopes the changes lead to more efficient management in U.S. cyber intelligence. Outside to doubt American intelligence when it comes to Russian hacking. I'm trying to just better understand why it's seems to Well, I just want them to be sure, because it's a pretty serious charge, and I want them to be sure. And if you look at the weapons of mass destruction, that was a disaster, and they were wrong. So I want them to be sure. I think it's unfair if they don't know. And I know a lot about hacking, and hacking is a very hard thing to prove. Hmm. These hackers, uh, we heard in the New York Times story that they got a hold of weapons that were created by the NSA. First of all, how, how would hackers get a hold of those? Well, in this case, uh, these weapons were, these, these exploits were released by a group called the Shadow Brokers. Uh, no one's quite sure who they are. I think there's a good amount of consensus that they're probably a Russian related group. There is a possibility that that is a an insider or a mole, uh, you know, uh, possibly a former official at NSA. No one is really sure. Uh, there, there's obviously there's probably a lot of work, as you can imagine, going on in the intelligence community to find out how these things were released. Uh, but of course, the reality for all of us is the genie is out of the bottle. They these things are on the street um, and, and criminals and other groups have access to them now. They were probably sent here so that we put them in our jails. Because to put them in our jails, they didn't pay the electric bill. To put them, oh, I like that much better. Oh. No, get those lights off. Off. Turn them off. They're too, they're too bright. Turn them off. Turn them off. Let's go, ready? Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Did Putin and I discuss forming an impenetrable cybersecurity unit so that election hacking and many other negative things will be guarded? Well, President Trump says he wants to focus on areas where the U.S. and Russia can work together, like on Syria and cybersecurity. But now he's under fire from both Republicans and Democrats for appearing to take sides with Russia over his own intelligence agencies. Let me begin by saying that. Uh, once again, the full faith and support for America's intelligence agencies. I have a full faith in our intelligence agencies. Whoops, they just turned off the light. That must be the intelligence agencies. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. You guys okay? Good. It was strange, but that's okay. Joining us, so Route 9B is a cybersecurity firm. First, give us the lay of the land. How vulnerable is our infrastructure to cyber attacks? Oh, I think it's the single greatest threat in the country. It may be the most powerful weapon you've never heard of. A sudden burst of electromagnetic energy that destroys anything electric in the blink of an eye. The power grid computer control systems, radio communication, 
all stop. It can come from nature or from an enemy. It doesn't matter. The result is the same. With little or no warning, life as you know it will end. Once again, the full faith and support for America's intelligence agencies. I have a full faith in our intelligence agencies.